you've expended a certain amount of reputational energy and much more on the jihadists. In your battles, shall we say there, how much allyship, to use a very voguish term, have you found from fellow secular, rational people who want to love and reason like you? Well, that is a leading question, isn't it? I've got uh, fingers if you need more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, you, you, your fingers are safe. Uh, <laughs> no, unfortunately. But, it, it's, but this is a problem of, I, I wouldn't ascribe this to, well, the allies you can easily find among deeply religious Christians, say, are there for the wrong reasons. Right, I mean, I, so I can find, you know, I, I can well, go not, into... Well, surely not reasons all of them. For that? Well, no, no, they're, 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 wrong they're, reasons. they're there for the wrong... Well, they, they see the problem clearly for the wrong reasons. So, for instance, I, so I meet secular scientist types, you know, anthropologists, say, who are so far from knowing what it's like to believe in revelation that they don't believe anyone else does, oh. right? So when you tell them that members of ISIS really believe that if you die in the right circumstances, you get 72 virgins and yeah. you're, you're, you're in, you know, r surrounded by rivers of milk and honey and all the rest. If you go into the ivory tower, you meet people who's, who don't believe that anyone believes that stuff. But if you go into a mega church, they know people believe that stuff because they believe their own dogmas, right? That's, that's what it's like to, be, to, to, to well, be effortlessly right for not especially good reasons. The fact that you believe a book, you, the fact that you believe a book was written by God and therefore, it's trivially easy for you to understand that someone else believes that, but they just have the wrong book. That's not the rational basis for understanding our circumstance that saying, we're looking for. I'm not saying whether one is right and one is wrong, but one seems to have more commitment in that. And in one battle you're fighting, commitment may be important. Uh, yeah, and indeed. And there may well, be many reasons why the people who deeply want to love and be rational are absolutely no damn use in that fight because yeah. they want to preserve their happiness a bit longer, preserve their comfort a bit longer, cannot understand people who genuinely come from a fundamentalist standpoint. Yeah. And, therefore and, and there's also other, well, there, to steel man their case for a moment, it is understandable to be sensitive to and guilty about the history of colonialism and the, the reality of racism and to be so committed to tolerance as your master virtue that you're tempted to tolerate intolerance and not recognize it to be cowardice, which in fact and, it is. And making tolerance your core value is much different than making truth your core yes. value, yes. which is an interesting yes. thing because, and, and perhaps this is one of the places where you and the fundamentalist radical leftists, let's say, differ, is that the core value that's emerging there is definitely one of tolerance, whereas the core value yep. that you espouse is one of truth. And truth yes. and tolerance are not the same thing. Yes, yes. And so it might Amen. also, yeah. Nor is, nor is the pursuit of truth and the belief that as a result, truth can be found. That it's not a single thing on its own. You just pursue it as a hobby. It's just something you do, but that you believe that at the end of it, there is a truth to be found. Yeah, yeah. So, but, so, but Douglas, what, what do you fear is the case here? If, if there were more people like me uh, in the West, Right. Well, maybe I'm the, maybe I'm the I'm the outlier here. I'm I, I'm somehow infected by this overweening commitment to truth and rationality and science, and yet I'm still motivated to worry about jihad. Well, uh, well, yeah. But you're, you're worried that there are many people like me who are are well, oblivious why, to the problem. Why are well, you worried about it when so many other people who are hypothetically this is the question you asked? Why are you so worried about when when there's so many people who are hypothetically like you? that don't seem to be worried about it. I mean, maybe well, you're wrong, and not to, you shouldn't be worried about it, here's although Douglas answer. is obviously uh, worried about it too. One answer is a possibility, it's my worry at any rate, that we may be living in an era when we are discovering that the Enlightenment and the Enlightenment's values never went very wide and didn't go terribly deep. Mm. And this is a very painful realization to make. But not only do we go all around the world and discover that, we find that at home. It, the roots turn out not to have gone very deep in even this right. society, and that's a problem. It, it is a problem, but but hence my uh, my commitment to making them deeper. 
And, and to reiterate the point, I'm, I'd be very happy if it was entirely Sam Harris's all the way down. Yeah, that's right. yeah, yeah. Okay? I'd have no problem with that. Yeah. It's just that underneath Sam Harris, it's hell. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, uh, I'm also curious. You know me too well. I'm curious about <laughs> something that you. Yeah, said. that has to be very carefully edited yeah. on YouTube. <laughs> in in the in the in the metaphysic that you outlined, um, rationality in the service of love, like this is an interesting. Like I'm not sure you get to get away with that because, like, is it rationality or is it love? Because yeah. I don't understand the place in your conceptual system for love, given huh? your emphasis on rationality as the ethic of. Uh, as, the, as the mechanism of ethics. So I would say to the degree well, that I smuggle in Jesus, which by the way isn't accidental in some sense, and I'm, I'm fully conscious when I'm doing it, you smuggle in love, and it oh, essentially no. plays the same role. Well, no, no, love, but love is a, a, an experienced reality. I mean, love, love is a state of consciousness. It's a state of, and I, w I wouldn't ultimately... Is it a fact? Well, it's a, it's a, it's a fact that one can experience it or not. Well, yeah, but that, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's it, not the same thing. No, it is. No, it is. I mean, there, there are it's a facts. fact that you can experience something, but there the are, thing are, that you're experiencing is there's also the thing that you're experiencing as a fact. Well, well no, there are facts about the the the, the range of human experiences. I, mean, I, I, I think, and not even just human, just conscious experiences. That if we, if we can build computers that can feel love, I mean, that's not inconceivable, and we'll either succeed in doing that or not. Uh, but Consciousness admits of a range of experiences, and love is w one of the best on offer. It's not the only one we care about, but it's the one that anchors us to a positive commitment to the well-being of other conscious systems. And th but it's th not. Th a, but the, but but the, the crucial thing is, thing it's is not the, the fact. The, I agree well, with no, you. No, it, no it, it is. It is a fact that loving someone entails a Really, I mean, so there, there are love and its counterfeits, right? There, pe people can confuse, you know, romantic, you know, attachment or lust with love, right? So, I mean, and the Buddhists are especially good at differentiating these various states of consciousness, and and uh, it's a it, a this this true pleasure, mental pleasure in the company of another that is colored by a commitment to their well-being, a wanting them to be happy, a wanting them, wanting to ha have their hopes realized, a non-zero-sum commitment uh, or sense of, of, of your entanglement with them. And you can see your failures to love. I mean, you, you can be with people who you think you love. You know, I'm, I'm with my best friend, say, and I just find out something fantastic has happened for him, in, let's say, in his career, and I feel a moment of envy, say. Well, then you see, well, okay, what? just how much do you love this person if... The, your first reaction to this, something good happening to them is you feel poorer for it. 